Janice, thank you uh, very much indeed for joining us. Um, it's three, three and a half months now since the uh, month of March program and the forum's annual conference. It, it feels like an awful lot has happened in, uh, in that time. How would you see it? Yes, a lot has happened and most it's quite worrying. The terrible war in Ukraine is continuing. There are no signs of expected calmer COVID summer period, just the contrary. And we can see consequences in challenges linked to energy and food security and in rising inflation. But on the top of these acute challenges, also the more chronic ones like the climate change, biodiversity loss and pollution are requesting all our continued attention. The triple planetary crisis is making instability the norm. The droughts and extreme weather events are getting more frequent. And this is particularly difficult for the regions already lacking water reserves, biodiversity is in decline, soil is still getting degraded. We are transgressing planetary boundaries and run the risk of leaving the safe operating space in which human societies have evolved. The danger to use the emerging acute problems for postponing solutions needed for a longer term sustainability is certainly present. But taking painkillers and stop taking the systemic medicines will not heal the chronic disease, but just make it worse, in some cases even not curable anymore. So against that backdrop, Janus, of the things that have been happening on the geopolitical stage, I suppose, I mean, the forums program has continued over the uh, over these summer spring summer months we had the the regional forum and in, uh, in prague we've had a number of solutions workshops particularly on regenerative agriculture and now we start to look into the second half of the year and build towards our regional forum in sweden at the end of the year um what what additional ideas and and things can we expect from a strategic perspective in terms of the forum's programming speaking about the forum itself its program has consistently evolved and innovated to be as inclusive as possible of the broadest range of stakeholders. We had an increasing focus on the quest for solutions, not just analysis of the challenges we face in building a more resilient and sustainable food and agriculture. The development of a more resilient and sustainable food, agriculture and land management system which is at the core of the forum's mission, must also consider the role forestry plays within that. The forest-based economy is an essential component of the system and it must be economically, socially and environmentally sustainable too. Investing in protecting and nurturing forest ecosystems and biodiversity is key to a thriving forest-based economy, which also contributes to the achievement of many of the European Union Green Deal objectives. Given this, the Forum will integrate a specific focus on forestry in its strategic programming to generate new thinking and ideas in this space. And we look forward to working closely with our new partners like Tetra Pak as well as our existing partners such as IUCN in this important area. Now, Janis, I know that we've often talked about this over the past um, couple of years in particular. Um, when you reflect on that, when you look at the things that the Forum has been doing in the course of this year so far, what, what would you particularly point to in terms of the core ingredients, if you like, for the Forum's success? In addition to outstanding speakers, we were always able to gather during all Forum events it is the continuous support of the growing number of strategic and supporting partners for which we are, of course, grateful. This remains key to the past and future success of the Forum, as we have moved from two funding partners now to almost 10, with IUCN joining us over this year as a new strategic partner. Forum has moved from only agriculture focus to food chain and from only EU focus to a more global, in particular deepening cross-Atlantic relations. Covid caused a special challenge, which forced us to rethink the format, and we are also in intensive search how to strengthen stakeholders' commitments to make Forum more impactful. And I suppose as we do come up on the summer break and um, begin to think about what, what does um, emerge in the second half of this year and indeed going into 2023, 
what are the core key next steps for you as chairman of the forum? We plan to include more leading actors and agents of change across agri-food value chain and forestry, as well as engaging more civil society partners and stakeholders, being the place to attract ideas coming from outside, for example, from our network of followers or next generation engaging students and young entrepreneurs. Our goal, and also mine as chairman, remains to maintain and strengthen the forum in a position to deliver on its objective of convening with influence. We have now a unique mixture of strategic partners representing various interests, and we must exploit that fact to contribute to transitional changes needed. As Patricia Espinoza said, we can do better. We must. So, see you all at the latest next year on March 28 in Brussels. And in the meantime, enjoy a regenerative summer break and build up your resilience.